Okay, so hi there guys. I hope um, all is well with yourselves and um, your families. So today we're going to continue um, looking at um, some gas laws and some equations that can help um, describe the behavior of gases under certain situations. So we've looked at Boyle's law, um, which was pressure and volume. We looked at um, temperature and volume, which was Charles' law. And now we're going to look at a third gas law, which is called uh, the Gay-Lussac's law. And this one is going to be dealing with the pressure of the gas and its temperature in Kelvin. So the Gay-Lussac's law was discovered by this guy called um, Joseph um, Gay-Lussac. And he explored the relationship between temperature and pressure of a contained gas at a fixed volume. That's something very important to realize. That when we're talking about this, we're talking about um, the volume not changing at all. The only variables we're dealing with here are pressure and temperature. So when he did his research, he found that a direct proportion existed between the Kelvin temperature and the pressure. You have to make sure your temperature is in Kelvin. Very, very important. Okay? So Gay-Lussac's law pretty much says that the pressure of a given gas varies directly with the Kelvin temperature when the volume remains constant. So in other words, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. So that means if pressure goes up, temperature goes up. And if temperature goes down, pressure goes down. They follow each other. So just like with Charles' law, where volume and temperature were directly proportional, so are pressure and temperature in Gay-Lussac's law. They follow each other. If pressure goes up, so does temperature. If pressure goes down, so does temperature. They're always going to do the same thing. And mathematically, we express that as saying P1 divided by T1 equals P2 divided by T2. Again, we have to remember T must be in Kelvin. Okay? So let's do a quick example to see what this looks like. And this is on page 35 of your notes, by the way. So it says the pressure of a gas in a tank is 3.2 atmospheres at 22 degrees Celsius. If the temperature rises to 60 degrees Celsius, what will the gas pressure be in the tank? So the first thing I'd like to do is write down all of the variables. So P1, no, oh, we've already done it here. So the first thing to do is to write down all the, all the variables, which has already been done here. So P1, T1, T2, and P2 is what we're trying to find, so we leave the question mark there. Remember, Temperature must be in Kelvin, so we need to convert both of these temperatures to Kelvin. So to go from de degrees Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273. Okay, so T1 is going to be 22 plus 273. It's going to be 295 Kelvin. Okay, and T2 is going to be 60 plus 273, which is 333. Okay, so now we have all that sorted out, we can um, plug it into our formula. So P1 is 3.20 atmospheres divided by T1, which is 295 Kelvin. And we set that equal to P2 is what we're trying to find divided by uh, 333 Kelvin. Okay, so we want to find P2. So P2 is on the top, so all we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 33K, and then that way uh, P2 will be isolated on its own. So let's do that. Multiply both sides by 33K, or 333K I should say. Okay. And then it cancels completely on that side, and on this side, the Kelvins cancel. So I just enter into my calculator 
333 multiplied by 3.20 divided by 295 okay, and then I get 3.61 atmospheres equals pressure 2. Let's make sure our answer makes sense. So pressure 1, or I should say, let's make sure the answer makes sense. So the initial temperature was 22 degrees Celsius. The final temperature was 60 degrees Celsius. So temperature went up. So according to Gay-Lussac's law, you would expect the pressure to go up as well. P1 was 3.2 atmospheres, and we're saying that P2 is 3.6 atmospheres. So pressure went up as well. It makes sense. Always do that common sense check at the end. That way you can uh, clearly see if you made a mistake anywhere. Okay. Let's do uh, a few more examples. I'm just going to make sure that the camera is focused. Okay, this is on page 36, by the way. So, question number one on page 36 says, A gas in a rigid container has a pressure of 1.00 atmosphere at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure of the gas at 50 degrees Celsius? So again, we write down our four variables. P1, T1, P2, T2. So we're told our initial pressure is 1.00 atmosphere. Okay. It says our initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So instead of writing that as Celsius, let's just convert it straight to Kelvin. To go from Celsius to Kelvin, we're going to need to add 273. So 25 plus 273 gives us 298 Kelvin. Okay. What is, and P2 is what we're trying to find. And our temperature 2 is 50 Celsius, so 50 plus 273 equals 323 Kelvin. So now that we've done that, let's set up our proportion. So if we look back in the notes, uh, that's our formula that we need to do, P1 over T1. So that's 1.00 atmosphere divided by 298 Kelvin equals P2, which we're trying to find, divided by 323 3 Kelvin. What we want to find is on the top again, so we just multiply both sides by what's on the bottom here. Okay, and once we do that, that cancels with that. 3, 2, 3, K. Okay, Kelvin cancels with Kelvin, leaving just the numbers. So we would enter that into our calculator as 3, 2, 3, multiply by 1.00, divide by 298. Okay, and then the calculator says that P2 equals 1.08 atmospheres. Let's do our common sense check. Our initial temperature was 298 Kelvin. Our final temperature was 323 Kelvin. So temperature went up. So we would expect pressure to have gone up as well. Our initial pressure was 1 atmosphere. Our final pressure was 1.08 atmosphere. So it did increase. So it makes sense. Okay, I'm going to skip to uh, I'm going to skip to question number three uh, to see if that one will allow us to find uh, a temperature this time. So it says water vapor in a pressure cooker is at standard pressure at 30 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature in degrees Celsius when the pressure is 151 kilopascals? So with this one, they didn't actually tell us what the initial pressure was. It just told us that it was standard pressure. So in a case like this, it's up to us to have some common sense to just quickly look in the book, Google it if we don't remember. But standard pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. Okay, so we're expected to know that and we have our temperature. And again, um, what we need to do is convert all of our temperatures to Kelvin because that's what we need to do. 
So P1, T1, P2, T2. Our initial pressure, we're told the standard pressure, which we said is 101.3 kilopascals. Initial temperature is 30 Celsius, so to get that to Kelvin, we add 273. That's going to give us 303 Kelvin. Okay. We're told that the P2 is 151 kilopascals. Okay, and we're trying to find uh, T2, so put a question mark there. So let's set up our proportion. So it's going to be P1 over T1, so 101.3 kilopascals, divided by temperature 1, which is 303 Kelvin, equals uh, P2 is 151 kilopascals, and our T2 is what we're trying to find. So again, we made sure every like we have kilopascals and kilopascals, and we have Kelvin. So we need to get T2 by itself. So this time T2 is on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is um, just switch T2 with the entire left-hand side. That way it becomes T2 equals 151 kilopascals divided by 101. 0.3 kilopascals divided by 303 Kelvin. Okay. So remember this entire thing is the denominator of the fraction. So kilopascals here will cancel with kilopascals here and the Kelvin will flip up to the top. So you would just enter this into our calculator like this. So it would be 151 divided by open bracket 101 Point three divided by 303 close bracket okay, and that gives us an answer of 451.66 Kelvin okay so that's straight um, the question wanted us to uh, provide our answer in degrees Celsius so remember be minus 273 this time okay so that means T2 is 178.66 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, and you don't really even need to worry too much about the units um, in this stage. You just always have to make sure that when you get to this stage, you have like kilopascals and kilopascals, or liters and liters, or atmospheres and atmospheres. And you're always going to have um, Kelvin and Kelvin for temperature. So as long as your units agree at this stage, you shouldn't run into any issues here. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to be looking at uh, ideal gas law. And then we'll go from there. So just let me or Mr. C know if you have any questions. Have a good one.